air cannot, it can't anticipate anything supersonic. It's going faster than the speed of sound. So there's no, there's no chance of air to move out of the way to, for smoothing things out. It's crack, shockwave, all changes. And that's what happens if you use an explosion to generate something, you get shockwaves. So what we discovered was that supersonic vortex rings are a completely different field of science almost. Vortex rings were actually something created in Austria in the late 1900s, where they used explosions to generate some mysterious aerodynamic force that actually went up and disrupted the formation of hail in clouds. And they used these all over Europe, like at the turn of the last century, to try and prevent hail from damaging their crops. The jury is still out as to whether it really does work, but the fact is it did send something up there. And there's a priceless article in the 1899 edition of National Geographic magazine where it talks about somebody once firing one of these things horizontally to try and see what it was. And it describes a ghostly ring that moves exceptionally quickly, knocks over a bulldog and says something like, he showed no desire for further experimentation. Uh, and that's what I wanted. I wanted to do something to something else so it showed no desire for further experimentation. And the whole time we're making prototype after prototype in the workshop. And we kind of got something that seemed to work. We didn't know whether it was a vortex ring and we didn't know if we could scale it up, but it did seem to work. We had an explosion, it went down a barrel, it knocked something over like with some mysterious wow. force. I found a man in California. He said he didn't really know how they worked, but he'd made them for saving like farmers' crops in California. So over a few like late nights chatting with him in California, I got this idea of how it was gonna be. I got an idea, a picture, a feeling of what shape these things needed to take. And what it is, you need to tune the size and ferocity of the explosion to the length and the taper of the barrel. And it turned out to be more about gut feeling than, uh, than exact science. In the only academic papers available just use like straight barrels, controlled explosions, nothing that, on the scale that we wanted it. I took a punt. We spent far too much money getting an enormous piece of metal bent into a curve, then spent far too much time turning that into a beautiful 12 foot steel cone, able to withstand the force of a quite spectacular explosion. Then on the back of it, we fitted an enormous explosion chamber. We set it up in a quarry. We aimed it over a lake. Now the reason for aiming over a lake is because the only way we'd been able to visualize even small high-speed vortex rings in the workshop was to chuck boiling water on the floor, fire it through the mist, and watch it condense a cloud out. Now what happens is the air is swirling so intensely and the pressure in the center gets so low, it actually instantaneously forms a cloud and that cloud travels at about 200 miles an hour. I mean, we clocked it at about 180, but it's just a rough like kind of taking it off the film. Firing over the lake, the relief I felt when a vortex ring emerged from the damp air above the lake and then did something is almost like, it's almost too difficult to explain. I was just thinking, this is it, I've kind of saved my job and I've seen something that I've dreamt of seeing for like four years. The next thing I noticed is these things, they don't quite work how you think they're going to work completely. It, once the ring approaches a surface, instead of kind of continuing its trajectory, it sucks itself onto the surface. So actually aiming it horizontally is exceptionally difficult. And this is my guess, but I don't think the military will convert these into weapons particularly easily. I know it's, a, it's an area of research they're going into, but it's the way they suck themselves to surfaces that make me think, it's not really gonna happen for them. They're just too difficult to fire horizontally. Now fire it vertically and it's a different matter. You hear this like wom, 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 like a noise you could barely imagine. I see it as almost one of the last great phenomenon that has never been seen on television before.